Hey, everybody. Welcome to our 12th episode of the MDMC live series where we chat with some of our awesome MDMC 19 speakers. Um, If you are joining us for the first time, MDMC is the Midwest Digital Marketing Conference here in St. Louis where I am at Um, and it is April 16th, 17th and 18th. It is the largest digital marketing conference in the Midwest and if you're joining us make sure to let us know where you're joining from. I'm joining from St. Louis, as is our guest, which you'll find out in just a minute. And then we have our producer. uh, Our show is produced by Stephanie Liu, who's also a speaker and a great um, help to the MDMC team. And she is, I believe, out in California right now. May be wrong, but I believe she is. Um, So we're going to jump in. If you have any questions at any point, throw them in the comments and we will answer them. Um, I see Mike Alton is watching. Hey, Mike, always an amazing guest and speaker. Um, So today we have the fantastic Michael Lamb, um, who is joining us. He'll be speaking at the Midwest Digital Marketing Conference. So this will be a bit of a sneak peek into his session. He is a very accomplished entrepreneur with over 20 years of experience um, and has spent the last 15 years specifically in the messaging space, which I know we've been talking about through the series some. Um, And he is the president and co-founder of Native messaging i'm gonna say let me know if i'm saying that wrong Na- native uh, message yep. and there we go it's native not, M- message. not msg we're not in the food business <laughs> at all. We're in the digital messaging business awesome um and he's, we're going to talk today some about messaging and what to expect during his session and get some sneak peeks so hi michael thanks for joining us can you tell us a little bit more about your company and your background sure hi thank you very much too for having me on and uh Look forward to uh, sharing a little bit more about what we're going to do at the event and really RCS messaging. So, um, you know, as has already been mentioned, I have a lot of experience in the messaging space. Native Message is uh, my second company that I've started that is basically in the digital messaging space. And that encompasses SMS, MMS, RCS conversational display ads, Facebook Messenger, Twitter, the web, anything where conversational interfaces can be integrated in to streamline and automate and manage conversations. And the session that we're doing at MDMC is specifically around RCS. And RCS stands for Rich Communication Services. And if you've never heard of it, you're not alone. It's a new protocol that's coming down the pipe here that will basically exist and live inside of the native messaging app on a mobile phone. So with SMS and MMS, you will now have RCS. And RCS brings the ability to bake in automation and chat bots into the native messaging channel on a device. Awesome. Well, I'm very excited to get into today's talk. Um, Again, if you're joining us, uh, hi, Yvonne from Sacramento. Thank you for joining us. If you guys have any questions, please make sure to put them in the comments and we will answer them either throughout or towards the end of the chat. So I'm going to dive into our first question. Um, Here we go. Um, What is, I mean, you talked a bit more about what RCS is, but could you dive a little bit more into it for those of us that maybe are really new and even the initial explanation (laughs) was uh, a little scary for us? Sure. So RCS is actually a protocol that was developed by the GSMA and the GSMA is a global body that works with different industries, in this case, the telecom industry, to develop standards for messaging. So as you can imagine, across the globe, there's close to a thousand different mobile network operators. And anytime you need to get a thousand people on the same page, you need to have somebody who's kind of overseeing that and who's the driving force behind it to make that happen. And that's really the GSMA. So RCS stands for, again, Rich Communication Services, and it is a protocol that can get built into and supported by a mobile network operator so that no different than SMS or MMS on a mobile device where you use that for messaging, RCS can now be used for messaging also. So the way that it works is that it exists inside of the native app on a device. So the Android Messages app on your device will now support SMS, MMS, and RCS all inside of that application. You don't have to download a new app. 
You don't have to download anything onto your phone or connect or have a different plan. It'll all work the same way that everything's working now on your device. But once you go on the device, you'll see an entirely different experience where there'll be carousels. You can have videos. You can have audio files, attachments. You can have predefined responses. So if you are familiar with a chatbot experience inside of Facebook Messenger or another platform, it's going to act basically the same way, except you'll be able to use a lot of the native functions of the device also, like location and being able to schedule appointments, being able to add things to a calendar, being able to make phone calls, being able to deep link into other existing apps on your device so that you can really think about it where it becomes almost your central hub for managing all of your interactions and communications and messaging on your phone with the ability once there becomes a need for some type of encryption or in healthcare HIPAA, any of those kinds of things, those conversations can then move into encrypted areas. Very, very interesting. Um, I, I keep thinking of the, the, like the GDPR and things like that in regards to opt-ins and this may be, um, yep. you know, some people, if people don't want email, this may be an option in the future to get them to opt in into a messaging type um, promotion or communication style. Um, I think this is definitely something that we kind of got to look at a bit more in regards to, you know, if we can't hit them here. We got to hit them on, you know, a different, different way. Um, and that's, yeah, that's absolutely. very cool. Um, I, I did have a question. So when reading your description of your session, um, you mentioned conversational ad units. What are conversational ad units? Right. So RCS is really a, again, it's a protocol that exists on a, a mobile phone and a mobile device. It is a messaging application that can support automation and chatbots. And one of the other channels that we support also are called conversational display ads or conversational ad units. So this is another new product offering that we're bringing to the market where you can take a conversational interface like a chatbot or a messaging interface, like a text messaging interface, and you can actually integrate that into a display ad unit. So now in a typical display ad, there's a picture, there's some movement happening, there's things buzzing or beeping, you're trying to get somebody's attention. Where now in this case, you can set up a display ad where you have your typical graphic or you have your typical image that you're using. And when someone clicks on that ad, instead of being taken to a landing page and taken off the site, now they can actually have a conversation inside of the ad unit. So you could capture a first name, you could capture a last name, you could capture an email address, capture a cell phone number, someone could go through a product discovery, somebody could locate information based upon their zip code, pricing, whatever it might be. And the reality is you're really bringing that ad to life then on the page by, inter by integrating a more engaging, participatory type of experience. And the end user can go through all of that without ever having to leave the page. I love that. Um, I mean, personally, I'm a huge advocate for making, you know, the process as short as possible. A few clicks is, you know, are absolutely yep. necessary. So, you know, instead of having absolutely. to go to a website and then say, I'd like to chat with a representative, actually just, you know, chatting right from that page. I, I personally love that. Um, I want to yep. give a real quick Tons of different shout -out. use cases. Yep. Yes. No, I love that. I want to give a quick shout out to Cynthia from Southern Illinois, very close to me. Thanks for joining us, Cynthia. If you have any questions, throw them in the, uh, the chat, um, especially about the conversational ad units. That is something completely yep. new to me. Um, and I try to stay on top of <laughs> all new the different for everybody. things. It's something that yes. we're really, you know, piloting right now and we're bringing to the marketplace along with RCS. Those are the two channels that we're really the most excited about really seem to get the best response from. So we're very excited about both of those. I, I am, I am too, just to hear about it, the idea right. of it. Um, yeah. So do, do you, people you think really want to talk on chatbots? I mean, obviously there must be some, some draw we're moving forward with this and it's all the buzz right now, but um, I guess, how do you see people using chatbots and interacting with them? So I think it, it's a great question. And it's a question that I get asked all the time. And, you know, my, my answer usually is no. Um, I wouldn't really want to talk to a chatbot. But 
that's the term that's been put out there for this type of technology. The reality is it's automating a process. It's streamlining a process and creating something that typically requires going to a website or going through some sort of other interface that can be cumbersome and have a lot of friction. Where when you think about a chatbot experience, and again, not a huge fan of the term, but everybody understands what they are. And you, if you rephrase the question to, if I created a platform that allowed you to get from point A to point B on your customer journey and whatever channel you wanted to communicate in on your schedule, would that be attractive to you? And most people would say yes, because then you can leverage the channels that we're spending all of our time in already from a messaging infrastructure to accomplish those goals that today now require potentially making a phone call and sitting on hold for 10 or 15 minutes or sending an email and waiting two or three days or going on to a typical web chat and having, you know, 500 words pushed at you. And really all you want to do is find out where your package is, where you can yeah. really start to take that process from multiple steps now into four or five different steps where you could literally accomplish, you know, resolving whatever issue you have with your bank or with the utility or with the cable company while you're standing in line at Starbucks waiting for your coffee. That is very attractive to people. So, and I think that's really how it has to be framed up instead of, you want to talk to a bot? Like nobody wants to talk to a bot. I want to get my issue resolved. I want to get the information I'm looking for. I want to take it off my to-do list. Whatever one of those things might be, that's very attractive for people. Yes, definitely. And while a bot can be great and it can, it can serve its purpose, I, I think I'm kind of getting the idea that it needs to be like answering the right questions from the right place, you know, at the right time for people. You Without know, they're, you know yeah. a, a bot may be able to do something like, what are your hours? That's an easy one. But, you know, where is my package or something more specific? Then it's kind of bringing some things together. Um, I, I definitely think that, yeah, it's, it's, it's finding kind of that, that right way to use each right. of these technologies and not just use them to use them. <laughs> oh, and that's the thing. You have to understand what the use case is for. What do you, what do you want your audience? What do you want your consumer to be doing in that channel? And that's really the best place to start is a very structured rules based inside the guardrails. That's how you learn. Because if you want to get to a point where you're doing real, conversational AI and leveraging AI, you need to have a lot of data. And if you don't have a lot of data, you really can't do conversational AI at scale and in a very streamlined fashion. Because if you think about an automation tool like a bot, it's, it has a brain, if you will. And if there's no information and no data in the brain, it can't answer the question. So that comes over time, but you need to start somewhere so that you can begin to build that data and you can begin to build that knowledge base so that you can get to that point down the road. Mm, I like that. Yes. Having the amount of data to, to do it right the first time. <laughs> Without a doubt. There's so, yeah. you know, you hear stories of, you know, what's my favorite Chinese food or what's my favorite Star Wars movie? And it doesn't know the answer. Well, it's not supposed to know the answer. No. It's supposed to help you track your package. And <laughs> if you ask that question, it can absolutely help you with that. So that's yeah. where I think a lot of the confusion you know, comes from where people are sometimes like, well, it doesn't work or it's broken. And it's, well, no, you're, you're interacting with it and asking it a question that it, it would never possibly have the answer to. So yes. we're not quite to the point that it can answer no. both of those questions at once. <laughs> no, no. And that's many, many years down the road. So yeah. Awesome. So let's take a quick sneak peek at what you guys can Great. expect from the conference. And then we'll jump back into some more questions. Don't forget to uh, ask, put your questions in the comments below and we'll be back in just a minute.
right. Awesome. So that was a little sneak peek at what you guys can expect from the Midwest Digital Marketing Conference happening in St. Louis, April 16th through the 18th. So we are in the final countdown. I may or may not be freaking out, but it's okay. It's coming. It's happening. <laughs> We're it's coming together. It's yep. all going to be fantastic. Um, it always okay. about two weeks out. Start start getting a little scared. Um, but that's what happens sure. when you plan a conference. Um, so um, now we're going to get a kind of a sneak peek at uh, Michael's session, which his session is the future of messaging RCS or rich communication services, which we all know what that is now. Um, can you give us kind of a sneak peek about what you're going to cover in your session? Sure. So it's going to be myself and a uh, representative from Google, Alex, will be with me also, and we'll be up on the stage talking about RCS. Uh, we're going to go over some statistics. We're going to go over uh, kind of some different use cases, some demos, um, dive a little deeper into the technology itself, not you know from a technical perspective, but just kind of getting into the weeds a little bit more about what you can do with it what the capabilities are, um, and just what the future looks like for RCS on mobile devices. Awesome. And who uh, and, and should attend this session? So should it be those who work in B2B, B2C, nonprofits, those just getting started or more advanced? Because um, there's a lot of sessions for them to choose from and kind yep. of pick it, you know. So, so uh, who do you think would get the most value out of your session? I think it's really, you know, B2B and B2C because uh, kind of where we sit, consumers are consumers. And, mm -hmm. you know, kind of the joke is you're either spending your own money or you're spending somebody else's money, but you're still a consumer, right? Yeah. You want to have a good customer experience. So I would say, you know, both industries across the board, but really it's about the next generation of customer experiences that are coming down the road here on the mobile device. And if you're interested in reaching people on mobile devices and creating participatory and engaging customer experiences with them inside of messaging channels, then this session is for you. Awesome. So, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think if you are looking to kind of become really innovative in your marketing strategy, do the next thing that's going to differentiate you from your competitors on reaching um, your customers, this sounds like a great session for Absolutely. you to attend. Um, so if you feel like you fall in that category, add it to your session <laughs> list. Um, Love to see you there. Definitely. And if uh, while you are not at your session or preparing for your session, are there any particular speakers you're personally excited to see at the conference? You know, yeah, there's a couple of things I uh, have gone through and added to my schedule. Um, and those really revolve around you know, customer experience, AI, video. Um, there's a gentleman named Danny uh, who's doing some stuff on chatbots. Uh, Wilson, Raj, and April Mullen are doing some customer experience AI stuff. And then uh, another gentleman named Matthew Hudley uh, who's doing some, he's doing a session on kind of community and giving and donors and sounds very interesting also. So a couple there, but really it's, it's about, you know, customer experience, anything with artificial intelligence and very interested in video also. Awesome. So yeah, we do. Have, we have a good amount um, this year. Um, definitely in the applicants, a lot more AI was talked about and it's definitely becoming more and more popular and not just kind of that out there thing. It's really something that yep. people are looking to learn about at conferences. So we're excited to have a lot of that there this year. Um, and I'm going to look real quick, see if we have any questions. I've got uh, Mike hasn't haven't built some uh, trap outs himself, but definitely it could be an implementation implementation technology that could be tremendous. But like we said, done right. And same with Yvonne potential, but you got to do it right and not expect it Correct. to answer right. every question under the sun. Um, and awesome. I think that's all the questions we have right now. But if you guys have any more questions that come up, um, I know this is a very new topic, RCS and co conversational ad units. So I'm sure you guys will have some questions after the fact that pop up. Yep. Throw them in the Absolutely. comments. We'll answer them, but definitely, definitely attend Michael's session at the conference. Um, his session is going to be on the 18th, so it'll be on Thursday. So you'll get in a bunch of sessions on Wednesday and then head over and see his on Thursday. You can get your tickets to the conference at bestmarketingconference.com. Um, we are 
selling them pretty fast. Uh, VIP tickets have already sold out in the majority of the workshops. So if you want to get your ticket, make sure to head over um, and we will see everyone um, in a few weeks. And thank you so much, Michael, for joining us today. Uh, it was very interesting. It's actually it's got some wheels turning right now for me. That's, <laughs> in that's good. To that's stuff. usually what happens. Yeah. Yes. We'll people about it. Yeah. And thank you very yes, much. I really enjoyed it. I appreciate you. the opportunity. Definitely. And thank you, Stephanie, for host, for being our producer again. And um, join us tomorrow at noon on Twitter. Uh, just follow uh, hashtag MDMC19. We will be doing a special speaker Twitter chat. All right. We'll see everybody next week. Great. Thanks. Thanks again, everybody. See Bye. You, see you in a couple of weeks.